Welcome to another lesson. This lesson's going to be a bit odd because it's going to be about colouring our scores. Now everybody knows that music notation is for the most part black and white. That way it's convenient, it's cheap, it's easy to read. But there are of course occasionally situations where we might want to produce a colourful score for children or for a music analysis or maybe even for particular contemporary scores. There are many useful applications for this. Now believe it or not, it's actually really, really easy to change the colour of any musical object in our score. We just select an object, we right click that object, click on colour and select a colour for that object. Easy peasy. And you'll also see that when I right click an object that there is even a hotkey to change an object's colour. Control J. And we can do this for multiple objects at once or even an entire passage of music. That is to say that when I select a passage of music and then change the colour all of the objects in that particular passage change colour. Notes, text, slurs, almost everything. I say almost everything because there are, however, of course, various things that don't change colour. The system lines or note stems, for example. And this is, of course, so that we can still read and identify the music. Unfortunately, in Sibelius, it's not yet possible to change the colour of these particular things. So if you do need multicoloured staffs and articulation, I'm afraid you can't do it with this program. You'll have to use some image editing software for it. Now, before we go any further, there is one thing that I'm going to have to make you aware of if you're using a PC. If you go to print your document, by default, you'll see that none of these colours in our score are appearing. And that's because we have to turn this on. And we do this by going right down the bottom of the print page and selecting the option Print in Colour. I believe that on a Mac, the default is set to print these colours. Now, once you've changed the colour of an object in your score, you can reset its colour by quite simply resetting its design. And as I mentioned in course one, the shortcut for this is Control Shift D. So we don't have to worry about permanently graffitiing our score. So, now you know how to change the colours of individual objects, but sometimes you might want to systematise the way in which the notes are coloured. For example, if you're trying to teach children how to read music notation, you would probably want all of the C's to have one colour and all of the D's to be a different colour, and so on. Now, there's actually a plugin that can do this. It can be found in the Note Input tab under Plugins, Notes and Rests, and it's called colour pitches. And here we can select a colour for each chromatic pitch. I'm just going to be doing something at random for the moment. And when I hit OK, we then end up with a very colourful score. The only downside to this plugin is that you can only choose from a small list of general colours that have been made available. Unfortunately, you can't choose from any colour that you want, but, you know, still, it's a pretty decent plugin. So not only is there a lot of potential for working with colours in scores, but there's also a lot of things that we can do by contrasting black and white for normal monochrome scores. For example, I could make one particular text type more dominating than the others if it's particularly important. For example, if I were working on an opera and wanted to make the individual scene titles more prominent. I'll show you what I mean. In Edit Textiles, I'm going to create a new textile based on subtitle and I'm going to call it Scene. I'm then going to change its horizontal position so that it's aligned to a note and doesn't snap to the middle of the page. I'm going to give it a thick, bold font, Arial Black, for example. And now I'm going to change the font color to white. And so that we can see it, I'm now going to give it a background. So under Border, I'm going to select Erase Background and I'm going to set the background colour to black so that we have a white text contrasted against a black background. And I'm also going to slightly tweak the size of the background so that it's even all the way around. And I'm also just quickly going to create a complementary textile without the background. And I'm going to call this complementary textile Scene No Background. I'm just going to change its font colour back to black and then also remove its background. 
and then hit OK. I'll just quickly add those to the score now. So there it is. You can see that the effect is quite dramatic, but simple to produce and quite aesthetically pleasing. So there's quite a lot that you can do by playing around with just black and whites. Now, there's one last color feature that I would like to show you, and it's a feature that I occasionally just turn on for fun, but it's not a feature that's designed to be printed. As you know, by default, if a note is out of an instrument's playable range, Sibelius will color that note red. But in the View tab on the right hand side, we can control the functional colouring of notes and actually turn this off by selecting None in the Note Colours box. But not only that, there's something really cool here too. If we wish to be able to see individual voice colours even when they're not selected, we can turn this on in the same place by clicking on Voice Colours. So when I enter in the four different voices into my score, You'll see that each of the voices are coloured the same way as usual when selected, so blue, green, orange and pink, except for being a darker shade when not selected. It's actually kind of pretty, and can sometimes be real fun working in this way, particularly if you're working on a project which requires lots of different voices. So that's it for this lesson, have fun checking all this stuff out, and I'll see you in the next one.